welcome back to another episode of High Output Juice. In this video series, what I attempt to do is to find out whether type a Milwaukee battery has any effect on performance in Milwaukee M12 tools. Uh, today, we are going to turn our attentions to hammer drills. I have a Gen 2 as well as a Gen 3, and we are going to evaluate these tools' performance with a variety of batteries. I have some compact batteries like the CP 2.0 that you see here, a CP 3.0, and here is the newest, latest, and greatest high output CP 2.5. Now, in addition to these batteries, I have an older CP 2.0 here. This is an older battery that I know is about halfway through its working life. You've seen it in some of my other uh, high output juice videos, perhaps. I, this here might be a typical example of a battery that you might have laying around in your at the bottom of your toolbox, and it'd be interesting to see whether an older battery has does it have a negative impact on the performance of a tool. So that's some compact batteries, and in addition to those, we got some XC batteries. I have an XC 4.0 and the latest and greatest high output XC 5.0. Now these batteries have cells in parallel that should be able to provide a lot more power to these tools. And well, let's see whether these tools actually take advantage of it. It'd be really interesting to find out about this Gen 3 drill. This drill came out around the same time that these high output batteries came out. Are these improved and are, are they able to actually take advantage of these new batteries? Huh, I don't know. We're going to find that out, however. Whatever the case, uh, the Gen 3 drill is quite nice. It's uh, definitely an upgrade over the Gen 2. It's a lot more compact, a lot smaller and lighter in size. It has a mechanical clutch as opposed to this electrical uh, confabulation and terrible. Anyways, let's get on to some tests. So here's the setup. Up at the top, I got battery voltage being monitored. Down at the bottom here is current uh, being uh, read by a clamp meter. And in the middle, I have a tachometer that will be checking out what sort of mechanical out output is happening. I'm not sure this is going to yield any meaningful data, but uh, let's try it out. And if something's interesting, we'll, we'll talk about it later. Now, for making this drill do a little bit of work and, and, and actually making some demand on the batteries, I have it in speed 2 and a self-feed bit, a half-inch self-feed bit. And oh, what this will do is, uh, hopefully, is, is make a relatively consistent mechanical demand from hole to hole to hole, from battery to battery to battery. Now let's start the tests. And um, I have here an old, almost worn out, dying CP 2.0 battery. I'm not even sure this will make the hole entirely, but well, let's find out. Uh, seems to have stalled. Oh, oof, and gave up. A new good condition CP 2.0. That one had no problem. A new C3PO, I mean CP 3.0. These uh, cells are not supposed to be quite as uh, high output as the 2.0. Well, let's see what happens. Well, managed to make it through. The CP 2.5 high output, this uses advanced cells that can put out a lot more power. No problem. The XC 4.0, while it uses older type cells, they are in parallel, so it should put out more power. That burned through there pretty easily. Ugh. And now the high output XC 5.0, the biggest, best, baddest M12 battery there is. No problem. So that was the Gen 2 drill. This here is the Gen 3 drill, and we're going to do the same sequence of batteries, starting off with a weak or older CP 2.0. Let's get the test begin. And go. 
And once again, couldn't make it through. A new good condition CP 2.0. CP 3.0, a high output 2.5, an XC 4.0, And finally, the high output XC 5.0. And we have data. Let's start off with battery voltages. Uh, all of these batteries are in good condition, except for one of them that I already mentioned earlier on in this video. Older battery, I know it's, it's, it's not charging up very well. You see that it only charged up to a little bit under 12 volts, where all the others charge up beyond 12 volts. Also, after drilling just that one hole, check out the voltage depression that we see on this older cell. Compare that to the voltage depression on the other cells, and eh, the voltage gets depressed a little bit, but not a lot. Kind of weirdly on this uh, CP2, the voltage went up after that first hole was drilled, but oh well, whatever. Anyways, all the batteries are in good condition except this one. Now, let us move on to a graph on RPM as a function of electrical power consumed. That's why I had the, the tachometer set up. I was hoping to get data something like this, and I, I think I kind of achieved what I was looking for. What we see here is that RPM has a linear relationship with watts consumed. Well, it, not just any RPM, that's RPM under load, and the load being using this uh, self-driving, self-feed bit um, into a big chunk of wood, a 4x4 four four chunk of softwood. Um, what I was hoping to achieve with that is by being able to measure RPM, it would give a proxy for mechanical watts, or how much actual work is being done. And I think that's being achieved largely. What we can see in the graph is that there is a linear relationship between watts of electricity consumed and amount of mechanical output. Uh, that's not surprising. Um, basically, amount of power in means power out in an, in an equal basis. It's not like an exponential relationship or it's not like leveling off and it's a diminishing returns or something like that. It's just simple. More power provided by the battery into the tool, uh, more power out. Uh, what's also notable is that the line for the Gen 2 drill is about the same as the line for the Gen 3 drill, uh, which suggests that there is no sort of new magical fairy dust inside this drill, which is making it uh, perform somehow more efficiently than than the older Gen 2 drill. Uh, it's laws of physics, I guess, just power in equals power out. Huh, no biggie. And then lastly, uh, let's take a look at this graph at peak watts produced. And this I found to be quite interesting. Uh, what I found to be really interesting is that these CP batteries, these uh, CP batteries uh, in the high output variety, they didn't really best the old cells by a tremendous amount. They did. They did better, definitely. The high outputs did put out a little bit more power than the non-high outputs. But the real big difference was the XC versus the CP batteries. Um, in, uh, in, in some cases, the XC would produce about 22% more power than a CP battery. However, the, uh, the high output versus the, uh, the, the, the standard XC, not as big of a difference. Really, that's not surprising because these XC batteries, they have cells in parallel and theoretically, a parallel pack of batteries should be able to provide double the current of a standard pack with just a single series of cells. But, but clearly that's not the case. The tool is limiting how much current can possibly be drawn from these batteries. Uh, what was very interesting also that I found is that this Gen 3 drill 
really is capable of soaking up more power from all of these batteries than the Gen 3 drill. This thing really does have a lot higher of output than this Gen uh, than the Gen 2 drill by about a factor of about 20% almost. That's kind of cool. So not only is this new Gen 3 drill just way more ergonomic and tiny, this thing packs a wall up. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you found this useful. Uh, subscribe. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.